first of all, I would like to welcome you and acknowledge that Richmond, where I am, is located on the traditional and unceded territory of the Coast Salish people. So we are guests in this territory of the indigenous peoples, and for these, we are very grateful. So a, a little housekeeping, uh, people that have been in the previous session know that if you want to tell me uh, to slow down, please do, and you do it in the chat. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, please let me know because I get really, really excited and sometimes I rush a little bit and that's not okay. So please, please tell me if I'm going too fast. Also, this session is being recorded. So if you miss something or you would like to draw later with some friends, you can rewatch it. I'll share the link um, afterwards. And hmm, more, more housekeeping business. Uh, uh, well, we are having next weekend, uh, not next weekend, on October 9th, another uh, drawing session. So follow all the uh, Richmond Nature Park things. And we're ready to go. So what are we gonna draw today at 11? Look at that, what is that? We're gonna draw the salmon. We are celebrating Rivers Day. And this is a salmon. Can you believe that? It looks like a dinosaur to me. Look at those teeth, look at that hook. And look how red his body is. So this is a salmon in a very particular moment of his life. We're gonna see how salmons change color and shape. Um, and we are choosing these because, oh my gosh, I need to draw those teeth. So we're gonna start, I have as always a blue pencil, a 2B pencil, an eraser. I don't, I don't use it that much. We, we, we like to uh, make mistakes because that's the only way we learn. And this is the sharpener. So to start with, I'm going to put my page like this because it's a very long fish. So the first thing I notice is that the body, look at that, it follows like an S. Whoop, whoop. So it's not a straight line. In nature, animals are very curvy. And guess what? A spoiler alert, that is all fat. He is very, very well fed. So I'm going to start with an oval for the main body shape. So with my uh, blue pencil, any blue pencil would do, but just make sure, make sure that you leave some room for the head and some room for the tail. So don't go too, too, too big. So let's see. And as you see, we use this uh, color pencil because we can draw as many lines as, as we wish and we will not see them. So I'm gonna draw a little bit darker so you see it well. So believe it or not, that's gonna be our fish, our salmon. And then I'm gonna kind of see how this tail is kind of pointy. You see, it, it kind of goes like this. So I'm gonna make two lines from that circle that are also curvy and that get a little bit closer to one another. Do you see that? From here and from here. And the tail, it's almost like a triangle. So by now, I'm just gonna make a triangle. And the triangle has three straight lines. Later, we will add curves with the graphite pencil. But for now, that's going to be our tail. And, you know, when we draw fish, this, is, this would be it, right? Like, oh, that's my fish. But look, oh my gosh, look at that face. So for that, I'm just going to make another triangle. But this is a different triangle. I'm going to make a line here. And a line here. This is the triangle. So let's go over again, okay? We started with an oval, which is a fancy word for an elongated or long circle. Then for the tail, we did two lines that 
they started a little bit separate and they like each other. So they're getting closer. And then we did a triangle. And then for the face, for the head, I just made a triangle, but this is different. The pointy bit is pointing outside and then the two lines meet the body. So I'm going to wait a little bit because I know this can be a little bit difficult. So I'm going to wait a little bit until everyone is gives me a thumbs up. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, ah, in the meantime, until everyone's got that, I'm going to write something very cool about the um, <laughs> about the salmon. Uh, I'm going to actually do something I, I rarely do. I'm going to start with my title. So I give you some time to catch up with this blueprint. And I'm going to tell you something very cool as soon as I finish writing this. I just want to make sure that you have time to follow because sometimes I hurry up a little bit. So this is the salmon. And I'm going to write here the scientific name of the salmon because it's very cool. And I'm going to try to say it out loud too, which is going to be a lot of fun. And, and I'm going to tell you what it means. Okay, so this is the scientific name, Oncorincus. And Oncorincus literally means nose hook. And when I look at the salmon, I'm like, oh, that's totally it. Isn't that amazing? I thought that was very interesting and cool. Okay, so everyone's catch up with this drawing. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding where these fins are. So I know this fin here is a triangle. Do you see that? One, two, and three. Maybe it has four lines because it has to be linked into the body. That is one, two, and three. And I will write down what's the name of that fin in a second. We have one fin there, one tiny, tiny fin there. So that's going to be here, somewhere there. Another fin there that also, yeah, it's kind of here. One, two, and three. And then there's two more here. I think. Yeah, this is funny because that's one and that's one and two, one and two. So some are just one and some are two. This one is two. So we see one that is closer to us and one that is kind of behind. And then these two here. And these are just placeholders. And what that means is that this is not our final drawing. It's just for us to kind of get to know this fish a little bit before we start. But one thing I want to make sure is that I, I, I add the eye. The eye is going to be around here. And <laughs> look at that mouth. For the mouth, I know we did a triangle, right? Yeah, the tip of the triangle is going to be the tip of the hook. We are going to add a detail to that. But I want to make sure that I add a little bit of that incredible fierce mouth. There we go. So let's do that again, shall we? I just used this blue pencil to make a tiny opening here and you can open the mouth as much as you want, eh? I, I invite you, actually, you know what? I am gonna open this mouth a little bit more because he is, yeah, he is fierce. Is everybody doing okay? Because I'm going to switch to graphite. Now that I have this blueprint, uh, this x-ray vision drawing, I can start adding detail. And the thing I like the most about the salmon is not only the red color, it's this face. Look at that. I'm going to make it bigger so you can see it. By the way, this image uh, is from Science World. I, I want to make sure that I yeah, that I thank them for, for the resources on their website. 
So there we go. That's whoa, <laughs> look at that face. So one thing I noticed is how the body is a little bit round on the top. So I'm going to make sure that I, with my graphite pencil, draw that curve on top. It's like a hump. And then I have another curve here and then the hook. Whoa, look at that hook. So that's, I'm going to go a little bit over my, my blueprint, but I, I don't care. That was just a, um, yeah, that was just a, a blueprint and no one is going to see the blue anyway. And then I am going to go down here to here. And that's going to be where the mouth is going to be opening. And then I have my other jaw. So we have an upper jaw like us and a lower jaw like us. When you talk and when you um, eat, you open your jaws, right? You open the lower jaw and then you close it. That's the same with the salmon. So as you see, we're just drawing with our graphite and making sure that yeah, that we draw our incredibly huge salmon. The eye is just going to be here. I'm going to make the eye here big so you see what I'm doing. So we had drawn this circle, right? So I'm just going to make another circle inside. I'm going to make the other circle come behind this circle. Do you see that? I made a circle and then I draw a tiny circle inside. So it's all circles, circle, circles. Isn't that amazing? All circles. So that is a close up of the eye, just so you make sure that you know what I'm doing. And then look at those teeth. Even we can see the teeth, one row here and on the other side. So I'm going to make the teeth now, and they are very long and very pointy. How many? I don't have that information here, but I'm going to look up that after I finish this, because I would like to know how many teeth these, these incredible fish have. And they get tinier as we get to this piece. Then they have also teeth in the lower jaw, and they also get tinier as they go back. And there we go, our fierce, fierce salmon. And if you wanna, if you want to, we can even draw the teeth on the other side and the mouth. And I'm just gonna, yeah, it's just making a line there, but you don't have to. I just. I thought it would be cool to have another row of teeth here. There we go. So that's our fierce, fierce fish. He also has like a membrane that joins the two jaws. So I'm just going to make sure I draw that triangle. And then it has like a line here. So I'm just going to make sure that I include that in the drawing. It's like a like this like curve line here. There we go. How are we doing? Good? Well, I'm going to start drawing fins. This fin here. And I'm going to start also adding the names of these fins. So these fins that are right under the, well, on the, under the body close to the head. These fins are called pectoral fins. And one is in front and one is in the back. These fins that are here, and look how I draw first the body and then the fin on top and then the fin on the back. The fins that are in the lower part of the body. 
these are going to be called pelvic pelvic fins and these are two i'm going to put times two times two this fin here that is at the very very end of the body almost almost in the tail this fin it also has a name it's called the anal fin and then we have our very interesting tail and the tail is as you can see it has it reminds me of the tail of a mermaid i love mermaids so i love drawing tails <laughs> so as you see in our drawing we just draw a line right but it's not just a straight line it kind of goes in and out i don't know if you've watched the little mermaid but it's one of my favorite movies <laughs> So I like drawing fins. A trick I'm going to do is divide this in half. So I know that is because it's quite symmetrical. So I'm going to make this line like an S from the very tip to around here. And I'm going to repeat this a lot so you can follow it with me. Did you see? We just drew an S. It's like the letter S, just a little bit long. And then we're gonna do the same thing, but this is like a reverse S almost from here and to here. It's the exact same thing, but the other way around. And then we have almost our fins finished, the caudal fin, that's the, the name of this. Or actually, I would call it the mermaid fin, but that's not scientific. That's how I would like to call it. <laughs> so then I'm just going to make a curve in both ends. Oh, yes. Oh my gosh, I love drawing fins. What can I do? I just love drawing fins. And it has some detail, it has some lines that I don't want to miss. There we go. And then let's continue linking this fin with the body. And then this fin here at the top, I think I might need to repeat how to draw the fin. Because I think I am used to drawing fins, but I understand that it can be a little bit daunting. So yeah. I will do that. I will repeat how to do the thing. So I'm going to do it here. Thank you so much for letting me know. So we had the end of the fish and we had this triangle, right? We started doing that. And what I did is I did a middle line here and I did an S on the top part and an S on the lower part and then I just made two curvy lines on each side and that's how I drew the fin so I'm going to give you enough time to copy what I'm doing and thank you for letting me know <clears throat> this other fin here that is very tiny that is called the dorsal fin. But wait a minute, that is also called the dorsal fin. So how can we distinguish them? Well, that is spiny. It has a lot of spines in it. A lot, a lot of spines. And this one hasn't, so it's called soft. And there's only one So you see some have two and some have one. And all these fins, all these fins let the salmon go super duper fast. And do you want to know how fast they can go? Oh my goodness. They, they could go to the Olympics. It's like when they are looking like this, they almost, almost go 
3,000 kilometers a day. Actually, wait, I, I, uh, 3,000 kilometers. 3,000 kilometers is the distance that they're swimming. And it's like running one marathon a day. Yeah, I got that wrong. Because guess what? Well, you finish copying the drawing before I go into, into the color. <clears throat> yes is not how oh uh, how do we spell it uh which which one which one which which let me know what what word i said that you would like me to spell uh, absolutely i would like to repeat that so this is not how the salmon looks like always do you want to know how the salmon looks like well look at all the different ways in which we can find the salmon. Oh, fin. Fin is spelled F I N. Fin. Thank you. <laughs> so, salmon, depending on where he is in his stage in life, he goes from egg to tiny, tiny, tiny egg that is called fry. And then it goes into the sea and it's just an adult salmon. And the one we're drawing is when the salmon is called spawning salmon. And we're drawing a male spawning salmon. And I'm going to write that down so you know how to spell it. So this is a male spawning salmon. And what this means is that the salmon has actually lived in the ocean for maybe, yeah, like, how, see, I have my notes here. The salmon is in the ocean maybe for like six years and gets super fat and he wants to go back to where he was born, which is in a river. So I'm gonna draw here what you catch up with the drawing. I'm going to draw something here for you. And I imagine that this is a river. And the river goes into the ocean, right? So I we're seeing it. This is the ocean with all the big waves. Let me put this up a little bit so you can see it. These are the big waves of the ocean, and this is the river, and all these waterfalls and water falling, and the river, the water goes that way and joins the ocean. So the salmon is born here in the riverbeds. And it's just a tiny, tiny pea-sized little fish. And he spends well, one, six years in the river getting big enough. And then suddenly, when he's six years old, he goes into the sea. So this is our tiny fish, our tiny salmon. And he's just going into the sea. And he's so tiny. And he, he gets into the ocean. He starts getting a lot of yummy food. <laughs> and he starts getting very fat. And he can stay here six years, one to six years. And when he's getting very big and very fat, guess what he does? He goes back up the river. What? I know. So he goes against the current and he has to jump and he has to fight all the waterfalls. And all he wants to do is to come back here to where he was born because he remembers he remembers how, where he was born. He has a good sense of smell. Oh, I see what you're asking. How do we spell the tiny one in front of the tail? Oh, you are absolutely right. So that's anal, that's A-N-A-L-F-I-N. Thank you for asking. Sorry, I, I missed that question. So this is the life cycle of a salmon. He's born in the river and he grows up in the ocean. And you know that rivers are fresh water. 
Fresh water means that there is no salt at all. And the ocean has salty water. So he's able to live in both fresh and in ocean water. Is that amazing? That's incredible. The one here, oh, <laughs> so sorry. My handwriting was not very clear. So this is soft, S-O-F-T, dorsal. So that's D-O, I'm going to write it here. D-O-R-S-A-L, dorsal. Thank you so much. Sorry for my handwriting. <laughs> so that's the life cycle. So we're drawing these very, very big salmon, male salmon that is been eating a lot and fattened up so he can go into this journey back to where he was born so he can actually fertilize eggs that another female salmon has laid there. So he goes back. Isn't that amazing? Imagine trying to walk against like imagine having a lot of people walking and you want to just walk the other direction oh my goodness that would be so much effort and so much trouble and guess how many eggs they lie they lay they lay like fifteen thousand eggs that's a lot not all make it so that's why they actually, um, they lay so many, so many eggs. So I'm just going to put my notes here. So I have all these cool, cool information. There's also so many other things that we can uh, tell about the salmon because they can be very tiny. The, small, the smallest one, that is the pink salmon. But the biggest one, the largest, that is the Chinook. And guess how heavy it can be? 50 kilos. That is very, very heavy. So do you know how that hook is called? That nose hook? And I have never heard this word, so maybe I am mispronouncing it, but I think if this is the word, it should be something like kipe. So that's how this hook, this hook nose is called. So I would love to add some color to our amazing salmon. And the reason why I chose this stage of the salmon is because look at that color. That is crazy red. So I'm going to start with my red. But if you notice, there is a very different line here. Let me do that line so I don't go over with my, yeah, because it's not all red. The head is actually quite, I don't know, it looks quite green to me. So I'm going to hold my pencil, my red, I hope it, it maybe I'll sharpen it. I'm going to hold my pencil like this so I can actually make very soft colors on the page. I don't know how long my lead is going to last. This is a little bit badly sharpened. So I'm going to start giving these a very, 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 hmm, red. I'm going to put this here so you can see it. Very overall red color. And he was very blue. He only became red when he was ready to go up the stream again and go back to where he was born. There we go. So that's kind of a, a overall red. As always, with color pencils, you can press a little bit harder and you start building darker areas like I am doing now. I'm gonna add a little bit of dark at the bottom because it's kind of from the shade. These fins are green, but these ones are red. So I'm gonna make sure that I also color these. And this one is also red, a little bit darker where it meets the body. And definitely the one in the back, I think it's gonna be a little bit dark. Yeah, because it's right far, far back. 
now I'm going to continue adding a little bit of shade, a little bit of shade on the very bottom of this amazing, amazing salmon. The top is the top um, thing is also red. And it's going to be a little bit darker where it joins the body. And then these front uh, uh, pectoral fins, I'm going to leave them for later. I'm going to draw a little bit here. You see how it's red, but then it stops there. So I'm just going to be very gentle with my red so I don't color too much of the caudal fin and you know what the caudal fin that's the one that helps the fish go this might be more for changing direction to be stable but this is the important one i mean all of them are but to to go fast and to jump that's the one Okay, dokie. Well, I think I'm going to go with that. I have a, a darker red. And you know what? You can use all the colors that you have and try. Try mixing. For example, I try that red and I don't like it. I'm going to try brown. Oh, yeah. I like to try that. And we can mix in the page all these different colors. And let's do some of the face. The face is very green, but I want to start very soft, okay? I'm going to start very soft. So we have a lot of opportunity to add a lot of colors. Oh, I also, while I do this, I also learned some very interesting things about salmon. Because guess what? Guess who likes eating salmon? Imagine that you are going into hibernation, which is this long sleep during winter. Imagine you're a bear. And imagine that you need a lot of fat to sleep through the winter. And imagine you see all these red salmon jumping, jumping near the river. I would sit there. If I was a bear, I would sit right here. I'm going to draw. <laughs> I'm going to try to draw a very, a very, a black bear. That's my bear. And I would sit right here waiting for all these fish to jump. So I can catch and eat as many, many salmon as I can. Oh, yeah, look at our fish. I'm going to also add this green into the tail. Uh, let's see. Oh, and I notice also how I can draw with a colored pencil, because I might lose some of the lines that I made. So I can go later with my pencil and make those lines again. There we go. And I'm gonna add a little bit of dark, because if I see the photo reference, I'm gonna move it a little bit so you can see it. That's very dark. So I wanna make sure yeah, that it's a little bit darker there. I might go with brown again. Ooh, yeah, I like using brown on top of colors. Look at that. Suddenly I got a color that I, I didn't have and I don't wanna buy thousands of colors, not at all. I can make my own. There we go. I'm gonna continue adding a little bit of shadows on the face and I'm gonna use that brown to go a little bit on the lower part of the jaw and a little bit on the lower part of the hook 
and a little bit here too. And definitely under the eye. Yeah, and here. And you can draw, you can color your salmon the, the color that you prefer, but I thought it would be super cool to color it as it is because it's already so vivid red and so pretty green that I could have never imagined that a fish could have these colors. I always thought that fish were blue and yellow like flounder from the little mermaid. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, and for this eye, I might color the part, the big circle green and the other part a little bit darker. And remember, we're gonna leave an area that is a little bit round. So we have a nice highlight. So I'm gonna put this in here. So the little circle black and the bigger circle green. There we go. Oh my, this fish is getting so fierce. Yeah, because guess what? While he's going up the river, he doesn't eat. He's eaten everything that he needed when he lived in the ocean. And all these body mass, that's fat. Which comes very handy for the bear. There we go. So that's a very, very handsome, very handsome fish. I'm going to put some lines that I lost while I was adding color back. And guess what? Because it's fish and it's underwater, I'm going to make some bubbles that get tinier and tinier as they go up into the surface. And I'm going to color the bubbles a little bit blue, just a little bit, so they look transparent. And the inside of the mouth, if you draw the inside, let's do that very dark. Ooh, but not over the teeth, so you can still see the teeth. Oh, yes. I'll raise my hand. I'll, I'll, I'll let you see what I'm doing in a second. It's just that otherwise I cannot see. Yeah, look how fierce. Oh my gosh. I like these teeth. I don't think he brushes his teeth though. I don't think animals do that. We have to. But animals don't. Okay, look how fierce he is. Whoa. I'm gonna add a little bit more of brown on top of the red. And because it's a fish and it's covered in scales, I'm gonna use my red to draw the letter C. And I'm gonna show you here. So to, we're not gonna draw all the scales, but look at this, if you look here, if we draw the letter C in reverse, <laughs> and we draw another C in reverse, and then we draw a C in between in reverse, what? Doesn't that look like scales? So we're gonna do these in tiny in the body. Let's see, I have a C and a C and another C in between. What? That looks like scales. So I'm gonna do that. As many drawings of scales as I want. Because otherwise, we did the river otter and the river otter was covered in fur. So now my fish, and I can maybe just do one, but I like doing three. I don't know, for some reason, it makes it look so much more like fish. Oh my gosh, this fish is looking so handsome. I'm gonna add more lines with red. I'm gonna use, because this red is almost about to break, so I'm gonna use <laughs> this one. Uh, I'm gonna add some lines into the spiny dorsal fin. 
Oh, wow, I'm drawing with my color pencil. That is cool. I'm going to add more um, scales. And I'm going to add some lines here for these pelvic fins and for this anal fin. And I might actually use, I actually like this color. So I'm going to sharpen it a little bit. And I'm going to use that red on top of the other red and see what happens. Oh my, what's going to happen? Well, the only thing that can happen is that you get a beautiful color. So don't be afraid of mixing colors. Whoa, I'm sharpening my pencils today a little bit to the extreme. Whoa, that's cool. But also I see a little bit of yellow, so I'm gonna be brave and I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow there. Oh man, sharpening day. There we go. Just a little bit here in the top. Whoa, isn't that awesome? Suddenly I have like a, I only use these three colors, brown, red, and this kind of golden yellow. And look what I got. It's just so amazing. I like this so much that I'm gonna use this same color here and see what happens. Oh, suddenly I got this very cool green and I didn't even know that I could make that green. Whoa, that's cool. I'm gonna put it everywhere now. <laughs> Oh my, so this fish, this salmon that is underwater, uh, so I'm going to add a little bit of blue around him. This salmon is going very fast. And guess how we can draw speed? It's very, very simple. And you're going to like it a lot. So if a if fish or a cat or a dog or any animal that you want to draw is going fast, well, first you have to decide what direction is he going. I think this fish is going that way, right? I think he's swimming that way. It's not like a shrimp. A shrimp will go backwards. But no, this, this is very determined and he is going forward. He skips swimming, he keeps swimming, and he's going very fast. So we are gonna make three lines and we're gonna make them from the top of this caudal fin. And I'm gonna show you and just look first and then you add yours. So I'm just gonna make a long, line, a tiny shorter one, and a very short one. Did you see that? I'm going to make more. I'm going to make more here. A long one, half the length of the previous one, and a tiny one. What? Doesn't he look like he's going super fast? It's like, pew! It's like super fast. I'm going to make one more here, but guess what? I'm going to do it. Hmm, let's see. This is an experiment. I wonder if I should make them from top to bottom as well. Yeah, let's do it again. One long, one medium, and one short. Oh, yeah, it works. So from every fin, I have made these lines that are telling me this fish is going super fast. And I can even do another line that is just two C's, one next to the other. And guess what that looks like? That he's actually moving his fins. So then with those tricks, you can just make a drawing that looks like he's moving very fast. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to add the speed lines here too. One long line, one a little bit shorter, and then the final one even shorter. Whoa! And he's also opening his mouth. So I'm just going to make these movement lines here too. 
oh my gosh, these fish, the salmon is so fierce. He's totally going to go up this river and he is going to be able to fertilize all the eggs where he was born himself. I find that very cute that he goes back home. So this is the ocean. Oops, I'm going to move this so you can see it. So this is the ocean. And maybe I'm going to draw a sun. And he's going to jump. And I'm going to draw these arrows a little bit better. And the bear. So this is the bear. We drew, we drew a, a grizzly bear once. It looked a little bit better than the thing I drew today. So this is the arrows. And this is the fish jumping. Doo -doo 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 -doo. This is a mini mini version of the fish that which is true. And this is just called a diagram. It's a schematic uh, drawing. It's not as detailed as the drawing we drew here, but we're just trying to explain how this fish acts in his life. He first goes down when he's very tiny, and then he goes back to the very top of the river when he is old if the bear doesn't catch him first. That's the bear right here. And he's ready to catch all the salmon <laughs> that are jumping. Yep, jump. So I'm gonna add some color to my title. And in the meantime, I don't want you to lose time uh, typing or anything. But if you have an idea for a good name for our very, very fierce male spawning salmon, you can type it, but don't lose time. Eh? I, I'd rather you draw, but I'm sure, I'm sure you have very good ideas. There we go. So I use red for the title, but you can use any color that you wish. And wow, I, I, I learned so much about, oh, rainbow salmon. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you. I'm going to write all the names that you guys suggest here. Rainbow salmon. Because I'm sure, I don't know. Um, mine, I think I'm going to call him Rodrigo. <laughs> He looks like a Rodrigo to me. I don't know why. I have no idea why. So one thing, yeah, one thing I was learning is that at, like when he is a tiny fish, when he just comes out of the egg, which by the way, if we were going to draw an egg, they would be very yellow and maybe a little bit reddish. But yeah, they're, they're very interesting looking. So when they come out of the egg, they have different names. Like it's not always called uh, a salmon. I found that so interesting. So they, when they come out of the egg, just if you're interesting, they're called alevin. I'm sure that's pronounced differently uh, in English, but uh, uh, that's, that's uh, I'll, I'll give it a try. And then they're called a fry when they, are a little bit older and go down the river. And it's not that he's fried on a pan. No, no, he's very much alive. And then when he goes into the ocean, he becomes an adult salmon. And then when he goes back to where he was born, he's called a spawning uh, salmon. So I think that's cool. Well, the dino fish, totally totally like he looks totally dinosaur to me whoa totally that is cool so i know we have maybe six minutes till the end so i wanted to make sure that you see it so you can add more color and more of these uh scale c's yeah 
not on the face though, not on the face because they don't have these scales on the face. Uh, and if you've been to the supermarket or the local um, the fishery, oh man, you can totally see them. And they're very interesting. And I see now that there is a line here that I forgot here on the face. So I'm just gonna add this line here with a little bit of dark here. This has been so cool. Actually, for those that suggest the dino fish, if you like dinosaurs, if you like fossils, that's what we're gonna do next month. We're gonna draw fossils. We're gonna draw trilobites. We're gonna draw ferns. So yeah, I, I, I invite you to, to register. And I'm gonna put a link before I leave. Um, so you know that all these has been recorded and I'm going to put these videos on this website that I made with all these videos and more that I've been creating for you. So if you go to live recordings uh, or your parent and guardian, if they're watching, that's where I'm putting all these videos so they can watch them, they can see the final illustration. Um, and the important thing is really what you make. So don't, don't worry too much how uh, to copy mine is what you make. And you can send it to the nature house. And I would love to see what you drew today. And you can put it on your refrigerator. You can put it there. It's like the, the museum, the wall of honor, the refrigerator door. And everyone will see what you've done with a lot of hard work. I can believe all the hard work and all the things we learned today 